the next topic is going to be all about things we can do with symmetric matrices. Now, before we start, it might be helpful to think of what are the symmetric matrices we sort of encounter a lot in statistics. Uh, and so take a second to think about that, uh, and we'll answer that here uh, shortly. Um, just as a, and this, again, this is for the intuition of what we're doing. The, the mechanics work for any symmetric matrices. So a uh, symmetric matrix has what's known as a quadratic form. And this is a principle we're going to return to quite a bit. And again, we can sort of help our intuition here for our purposes by thinking of a symmetric matrix as a covariance matrix. Uh, remembering that a correlation matrix is a special case where uh, the elements are all bounded. The diagonal is equal to one, and the off diagonal elements are between negative one and one. So for any vector x uh, length p, uh, the symmetric and the symmetric p by p matrix A, uh, they have the quadratic form x transpose times A times x. So that's, that's what a quadratic form looks like. And so we can think of what's going on here as uh, we're multiplying a row vector x, x transpose or x prime and squaring it. So we're multiplying it by itself. Uh, and then we're multiplying this by a covariance matrix A. So if we have a two by two matrix um, and a one by two row vector, uh, this would uh, look like, like what we see here, um, where we have the, the row vector times the matrix times the vector transposed to a column. And that gives us, uh, would give us A11, so the first diagonal element times the first element squared, X1 squared. Uh, plus a22, two, two, the, the second element times the second diagonal element squared. Uh, and then the um, both elements times the off diagonal elements times two. And so what we're doing here is we're essentially taking our an observation of two variables from our data set and multiplying it by the covariance matrix um, of those two variables. So a special type of symmetric matrix is called a positive definite matrix and it satisfies these conditions. So uh, a symmetric matrix is non-negative definite or positive semi-definite if for any x uh, the quadratic form is greater than zero. And it turns out this also implies that all of its eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero. And so this is greater than or equal to for a positive semi-definite. And a matrix is positive definite if its quadratic form is always going to be greater than zero, and all of its eigenvalues are greater than zero, which again, this is implied by the quadratic form being greater than zero. So why do we care if a matrix is positive definite? So what, what, one reason is that it means that when we multiply an eigenvector by its eigenvalue, it won't change the sign of the vector. Uh, so if an eigenvalue is positive, it means that it's, as long as, we multiply it by its eigenvector, all the uh, signs of each element of the eigenvector will stay the same. They won't flip. So this allows us to think of a matrix's quadratic form as a type of distance, uh, so where the quadratic form equals what we call C squared here, and where C is the con what we call the constant distance for the observation x uh, given covariance matrix A. So remember, this is an observation of all variables in one observation of all variables taken from the covariance matrix A. That's the sort of best intuitive way to think about this. And so since we set our eigenvectors as E's, which have length one, we can then use uh, the constant distance and the eigenvalues to determine the length of our observation X along each eigenvector uh, as uh, C divided by the square root of the eigenvalue times the, uh, the normalized eigenvector. So we're going to practice this and try to visualize sort of what's happening here geometrically. So we'll start with this matrix here. Uh, this is a symmetric matrix, as you can see. The, it's the same off the diagonal on either side. And we have a row, a row vector here, uh, 2, 1. Don't worry too much about the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. You can try to get them on your own, but I'm going to give them to you. Uh, but let's start by getting this c squared term. So remember, c squared is the output of the quadratic form. So we're going to get c squared equals x prime or x transpose times a times x. So that's 2, 1 times our matrix times 2, 1. Uh, and it turns out that's going to give us 27. So the, as you can see, the, the quadratic output is always going to be a scalar. And in this case, the scalar is 27. And so we can practice this in R. 
Um, so here I define my uh, my my row my row vector as two one, uh, and then my matrix I define there, and then I multiply the row times the matrix times the row transposed, uh, and it gives us twenty seven. And so I can I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cheat and get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, instead of doing it by hand to because we we looked at that in the last lab. We don't have to do that for homework, but here we're skipping that that piece. So here I'm going to get uh, extract lambda one as the first eigenvalue from uh, eigen a, uh, the eigenfunction around a, and then the same lambda two. I'm going to get the second uh, eigenvalue, and that's those they're they're there on the screen. Uh, and then I'm going to get the eigenvectors. And remember, uh, R sometimes flips the signs of the eigenvectors. The signs of the eigenvectors are arbitrary. Um, if you do this by default in R, it's, it's going to output the first eigenvector as being negative. Uh, so I'm just going to negate it because I prefer positive numbers. Uh, again, it's arbitrary. Um, so I'm going to take the negative value of the this eigenvector uh, just to flip it around of both eigenvectors. Um, so that way, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's just going to look nicer when we plot them in a moment. And so we have our matrix uh, and our row vector. Uh, we have our constant of distance squared. Uh, so we have C squared is 27. Uh, then we have our eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So using C and our first eigenvalue, we can now find where our row vector, our observation, lies along the first eigenvalue. So we take uh, C divided by the square root of uh, our first eigenvalue times the first eigenvector, the normalized eigenvector. So here we see this math as it plays out. Uh, and it turns out it gives us this vector output. So what is going to be uh, x on our second eigenvector? Let me just do the same thing, um, except we use the, we use the same 27. Um, but we're going to use the second eigenvalue and eigenvector. And um, so you see that here. So we now have uh, our we so the, the, these uh, these new vectors that we have, um, including this one, which is the x on the second eigenvector. This is the length of x along this the second eigenvector. So this this uh, this vector has the same direction as e two. It's just a different length. So we can now plot these vectors, uh, which is plotting our row along the eigenvectors. And one thing you'll note is that they are orthogonal and they have different lengths. So they don't have length one anymore. They don't have, if we just plot them as e's, they would have the same length. Now they have different lengths. So uh, here we see uh, we have x on e1 here on the right hand side and x on e2 on the left hand side. So these are still our eigenvectors. They just have lengths that are defined by C and our eigenvalues. And so what this allows us to do is it also allows us to draw an ellipse around the uh, eigenvectors. And we can think of this as the constant distance of our row of X, uh, X transpose on A, our covariance matrix, in any direction. And so uh, we'll see more what these I later in the semester why this is important and why we like to think of them uh, in terms of these orthogonal eigenvectors. But for now, this is essentially a geometric representation of the distance um, of x prime on A. We can also look at what would happen to this distance for different values of for x prime. So this would be a completely different row. So this might be a different observation. And here you see I use a different observation. And so this is a much further distance. Um, this is a larger distance. So these are larger eigenvectors. The ellipse is larger, but it's the same shape. Uh, it's just a larger ellipse uh, than the first one. And so we can think of any row as having a constant distance from the covariance matrix uh, that can be represented by an ellipse. And that's what we're seeing here. So the other thing we're going to talk about in terms of symmetric matrices matrices is called spectral decomposition. And so this is an important, useful property of a symmetric matrix. Uh, and it tells us that we can rewrite a matrix uh, in terms of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, or a symmetric matrix in terms of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, specifically the sum of all of its eigenvalues times its uh, eigenvector 
times its uh, transposed eigenvector. So we can see what this looks like. Uh, we consider this matrix. This is in the book too, and we can see it there. So we have this three by three matrix. This is a symmetric matrix. Um, and so we have the eigenvalues and eigenvectors here. Um, so we can use these to re-represent uh, the matrix as the sum of elements composed of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So uh, we're going to say A equals the first eigenvalue times the first eigenvector times the first eigenvector transpose plus the second eigenvalue, which also happened to be nine, times the second eigenvector times the second eigenvector transpose, and then the third eigenvalue and third eigenvector. And so just doing some of this math, uh, we wind up, if we multiply these out, we get these three matrices. So uh, this one down here, this last one is this, the result of 18 times the eigenvector times the transposed eigenvector. You can see that this is gonna be, uh, so this is three by one, one by three. So it's gonna be three by three. And so it has the same shape as our original matrix. So we get three matrices then of the same shape as our original matrix. And it turns out when you add them all together, you recover the original matrix using just the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we're not gonna prove this together. Uh, it's complicated algebra, but um, we can use this to prove why um, our if our quadratic form is greater than zero, it means that our eigenvalues are also greater than zero, which remember these are, uh, either one of these is a definition for a positive definite matrix. They're necessary conditions of one another. So if the quadratic form is greater than zero, all eigenvalues are also greater than zero. And the way you can do this is you can plug a matrix's uh, spectral composition into its quadratic form and show that this means that um, the, uh, if, if, this, if this piece is true, um, then all the eigenvalues must also be positive. And again, it's in the book. I encourage you to go through it, but we're not gonna do it here. Uh, so besides helping us with some convenient proofs, uh, we can use the spectral decomposition to obtain uh, some, to, do, to perform some operations on symmetric matrices that are useful. Um, and a little bit easier to do than how we may have learned before. So one we've already seen is we can use spectral decomposition to help invert a matrix. So a little bit more notation first. Um, so we're going to call P a matrix that is where each column is an eigenvector of the of A, our symmetric matrix. And then we're going to call capital lambda a matrix that has the eigenvalues of A on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. So it's a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So here we see P, um, it's just a matrix where each column is an eigenvector, and then lambda is the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So this allows us to rewrite our spectral decomposition as uh, P capital lambda P transpose. Um, it's the same math as this uh, sum equation, it's just writing it in uh, matrix notation. Also note that the, the reason this is helpful, one of the reasons this is helpful, is that because all of the eigen uh, vectors are orthogonal, it means that P is an orthogonal matrix. So uh, P times itself in either direction is gonna give you the identity matrix. So that's, that's a helpful thing to remember. So we can get the inverse of a symmetric matrix using the spectral decomposition um, by substituting the eigen values for the inverse of the eigenvalues. So just substituting one over the eigenvalues here. Um, and so that gives us uh, the inverse of the matrix. And we can see, we note this as uh, P uh, times uh, the uh, lambda matrix to the negative one, the inverse of the lambda matrix times P transpose. And so we can see that this works out um, because if we multiply P lambda inverse P transpose times P lambda P transpose, um, these lambdas cancel each other out, which gives us just P times P transpose, which again, as we discussed, is an orthogonal matrix, making it I. So that tells us that uh, P lambda, uh, lambda inverse P transpose is the inverse of <coughs> our original A matrix. Uh, just one thing also to note here, um, does this imply that there are certain eigenvalues that might suggest the matrix is not invertible. Like for what, is there, is there a value of, of lambda here where if we plugged it in, um, we would not get a defined result. Um, and the hint is here. Um, so of course, if we have uh, any 
eigenvalue that's zero, we won't be able to do this. And that means that if uh, an eigenvalue uh, of the matrix is zero, the matrix will not be invertible. And we call this a singular or degenerate matrix. Uh, and finally, the last thing which we, is new, uh, we can define the square root of a symmetric matrix, a to the one half, using the spectral decomposition, um, where we do something very similar. Um, instead of taking the inverse of the eigenvalues, we take the square root of the eigenvalues. Um, and we, didn't, we can denote this as P uh, capital lambda to the one half P transpose, where uh, lamb, capital lambda to the one half is a diagonal matrix um, of the square roots of the eigenvalues. Uh, and so the square root matrix is symmet a symmetric matrix um, that has the following convenient properties. Uh, if you multiply it by itself, it recovers the original matrix. Uh, if you uh, invert it, um, you get the inverse square root matrix, which is something that we will use frequently. Um, the inverse square root matrix times the square root matrix is identity, which is, satisfies the definition of an inverse. And uh, if you multiply the inverse square root matrix uh, times itself, you get the inverse of the original matrix. So just for some practice, uh, we can uh, use spectral decomposition or the spectral decomposition method to get the inverse and square root of this A matrix we looked at before. Um, I've given you the eigenvalues and eigenvectors here. Uh, I encourage you to go ahead and practice this. Uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like for inverse. It's basically the same procedure with square root, you except you're taking the square root of the eigenvalues instead of the inverse of the eigenvalues. Uh, so give this a try, uh, pause it here. I'll show you the inverse. So for the inverse, uh, we're taking the sum of all uh, one over eigenvalues times eigenvector, eigenvector transpose. Uh, so that's one over 5.56. So this is the first eigenvalue times the first eigenvector times the first eigenvector. Second, one over second eigenvalue times second eigenvector, second eigenvector. Uh, and so here I just do out the math uh, and you can see that gives us this matrix down here as the inverse of A. And we can of course check this in R with the solve function. Uh, you see we get the same thing. And so finally, there's the square root matrix. Uh, that's how we get the square root matrix. So again, I, didn't, I don't think I wrote this all out here. It's a lot to write this in LaTeX, uh, but we can check it. Uh, so one way we can check it in R, uh, there actually isn't a built-in square root matrix function, uh, but there is one in the EXPM package. There's probably other ones too. Um, that's just one that I found quickly. And that's the square root M function. And so that'll give us the square root matrix of uh, A here. And we can verify that this is the square root by multiplying it by itself. And you see we recover the original matrix. 